Probably when I was about seven, I heard the name Duke, and I, as a child, would probably wouldn't remember too much. But throughout my lifetime, I've had reminders, and you know, as I matured, I I've begun to take that name a lot more seriously and uh, carry it with me in the back of my head. It's a real honor to be here and to swim as part of this team. You know, to represent this state, this school, my coaches, my family. Uh, you no, know, it's a big honor, and I take it very seriously. My uh, great grandfather, uh, Henry Ho'olai Pawa, and Uncle Duke's mother, uh, Julia Paakonia uh, Pawa, were brother and sister. Uh, and Uncle Duke uh, had, a, as well as his other brothers, uh, Uncle Sam had a significant part in the raising of my dad and his generation. Uh, and uh, you know, I was very fortunate as well as a, as a young boy to, to have known him. I mean, he, he was a, a world record holder uh, and, a, and uh, from Hawaii, uh, Hawaii's first Olympic uh, athlete. As far as the name goes, that too is a big privilege. The young children in my family are taught to take the name of Duke and to use it as inspiration and you don't trade that name you don't use it to get privileges uh, you don't want any pressure but you take it as inspiration um, to you know achieve at the highest level no matter what it is you pick a discipline and you go hard at it 100% it was a dream come true yeah, it was almost too too surreal, you know, too, too great to be real. And I still wake up every morning thinking, wow, I am very lucky to be here, to be part of this team. Not many people would think that uh, maybe a country town kid would have a lot of chance, but, um, you know, I'm lucky enough to have, you know, my family to help me um, and my teammates, what teammates I had that drove me um, towards this dream of competing for UH. So I'm very lucky and credit to them. We live in a, in a very, very rural part of New Zealand. Uh, I'm, I'm originally from here, um, but for the last 20 years, I've basically raised my family there. And we've had the wonderful opportunity to live in a, in a wide array of locations around the North Island. Yeah, there is a swimming pool there, but um, not a lot of Beyond that, not a whole. We didn't have. We, we didn't have a coach. We, ha, you know, we didn't have a lot. Yeah. And so the notion or the idea of of him actually getting into a Division One program, let alone a university program, yeah. was was really, uh, you know, was really it was a very distant possibility. Well, the first time I met John, uh, he didn't know how to take his heart rate or read a digital pace clock. He didn't know how to pace for his races and he swam backwards in the lane. Um, so just really, you know, he's a sophomore now, but that first year was really just getting him to understand and comprehend how, how things work here in, in our program and within the NCAA. And he was able to do that. And now in his second year, we're really seeing him blossom. As far as my role in this team, yeah, I've just, I see myself as you know no higher than, than anybody else. You know I'm I'm here to contribute to this team and score points and swim my hardest for these guys. You know every time I walk into this pool, his picture is on the wall, and so I turn to that picture every time I come in here and I I look at him and I give him a nod and you know I say I'm saying to him, here I am. I'm going to do my best, and then with that I carry on and you know put in 100% with the rest of this team. I, I try to be the best teammate I can and to be the hardest worker uh, on this team. Uh, you know, I like to talk about Hawaiian stuff with the boys when I can and to educate. Um, that's a lot of fun. We call it almost like a culture club that every week or every other week, uh, John and Alki, another member of our team, are educating our team on Hawaiian culture, values, talk story, and that's something they've really, uh, you know, grasped and really the team has accepted. They love hearing it. Well, back in his day, Duke used to uh, travel around the world and spread knowledge on swimming and surfing. 
and so one of the places he visited was uh, New Zealand, which just so happened to be where I was raised and born. So this, so what he did was he revolutionized the freestyle kick, and they called it the Kahanamoku kick, more commonly known as the flutter kick. And so he did an exhibition in New Zealand, and then after he was done with the pool, he went to go surf and show everybody how to surf. And so I think it's very interesting that you know New Zealand was the place that I learned to swim. You know, I learned the flutter kick and I learned how to surf. And you know, that wouldn't have happened without him.